One of the fastest growing Linux distributions is Garuda Linux. I did a video about Garuda about eight or nine months ago, and when I did that video, I had never even heard of Garuda when I made that video. So it's a rather new distribution, but I was so impressed with their KDE Plasma edition that I reviewed nine months ago. I thought it was the most beautiful Linux desktop I had ever seen. Not even kidding. I, that video I did about nine months ago, go check it out if you're interested in the KDE dragonized version of Garuda. But I thought it was just an incredibly well-polished, put-together distribution. If I go to their website here at GarudaLinux.org, uh, Garuda actually means eagle, and so they've got a uh, eagle as a mascot. You get pictures of eagles everywhere on the site and in the distribution itself. But you can see some of these screenshots are just gorgeous. You see their Calamari's installer. It's got some Gaussian blurring in the background, and it just looks really nice. Their terminal here, it's got some Gaussian blurring background as well. By the, the way, the default user shell in Garuda is the Fish shell, which I, you guys know I love fish, so that's one of the reasons why I was so positive on Garuda. They also use ButterFS as their default file system, so that's interesting. And because they use ButterFS, they already have automatic snapshotting out of the box using Time Shift. Time Shift takes a snapshot of your system, so if you ever do like a system update or something and things are broke, you can roll back to a previous snapshot. And this is kind of baked into ButterFS, so it's one of the really great reasons why many distributions now are starting to transition away from Extend 4 over to ButterFS. And of course, Garuda has many custom applications that they design themselves. And probably one of the other big things that separates Garuda from many other standard Linux desktop distributions is the fact that Garuda uses the Linux Zen kernel out of the box rather than the standard generic Linux kernel. The Zen kernel is better on performance. It's also better for gaming, for example. So it's kind of for high-speed Linux, right? That's what, what uh, Garuda is designed for. High-speed, no drag. Now, when I made my initial video about Garuda about nine months ago, I haven't revisited Garuda since then, and you guys have wanted me to. I've had requests, especially you guys that know I love tiling window managers, because Garuda actually makes several tiling window manager additions. Other than KDE, XFCE, GNOME, and LXQt, they also have additions for Wayfire, which is a Wayland uh, window manager, a standalone floating window manager. It's basically Compiz rewritten for Wayland. They also have Qtile, which you guys know I love Qtile, BSPWM, i3, and Sway. Sway is basically i3 rewritten for Wayland. So given these choices here, you guys know the one I'm going to go grab. Of course, I'm going to go grab the Qtile edition. So I'm going to go through the their downloads page here and find the image. They've got really nice screenshots for all their editions. KDE Dragonized is uh, the one I did about nine months ago, and that thing was just absolutely insane. I love their version of KDE, but I'm going to grab Garuda Qtile. And I'm going to go ahead and run through a quick installation of Garuda's Qtile edition inside a virtual machine. So I grabbed the ISO and I spun up a virtual machine. One thing to note is you get this boot screen that is very reminiscent of the Manjaro boot screen where you can uh, play around with the time, uh, the key table. By default, it's set to US, but you can change that if you need to. Language is English US. Again, you can change that if you want. And then we have the options of booting with open source drivers, which is okay for me in this VM, or uh, booting with the proprietary NVIDIA graphics drivers, which is probably what a lot of people on physical hardware will want to do as especially if you have an NVIDIA card, of course. I'm going to go ahead and boot with the open source drivers. And we're at the login manager, and wow, what a great customized login manager screen. This is actually really gorgeous here, this login manager screen. I'm not sure which login manager they're using. Probably SDDM. I'll check that once I actually get into the live environment. The problem is the live environment user is named Garuda. We need a password. I'm assuming, since they gave us the name Garuda, the password would also be Garuda. That would just make sense. Now, this thing did not load properly. I'm getting some issues here. This is going to be some compositing issues where things are not quite right. What I'm going to do, if I do super enter, can I get a terminal? It did open a terminal, but I can't really see it. I can see the border. I'm going to just type kill all PyCom. 
I mean, <laughs> kill the compositor. I already know what the problem is. I think I dealt with this problem the last time I took a look at Garuda inside a virtual machine. Is they're using some very customized PyCom settings to get that Gaussian blur effect that you see in some of the screenshots and things. And that some of that stuff does not play well inside virtual machines at all. So uh, if you guys are going to try this inside a virtual machine, I would just kill the compositor. So kill all, all one word, space, PyCom takes care of that. And now I can actually see the uh, live environment so super enter got us a terminal super Q would that close a window yes and we've got our welcome screen here we can install Garuda Linux so that's what I'm gonna choose here and we get our Calamaris installer American English has been chosen for the language that's fine uh, Chicago the central time zone has been chosen for me that is correct English US for the keyboard is correct for me and then what do we want to do with our disk I want to erase the entire disk and give the whole thing to Garuda I don't want to swap but if I wanted to I could swap with hibernate I could create a swap but in this VM uh, I'd rather not create a swap so I'm just gonna have the one partition there and then what is your name I'm going to call my user DT what is the name of this computer I'll call it Garuda dash vert and then we need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user and then repeat that strong and complicated password and then do we want to log in automatically without asking for a password no I will actually want to enter a password for privacy reasons and then use the same password for the administrator account so this means that our sudo password is the same as the DT users password I will leave that ticked on then I'm going to click next and we review everything. The location looks good. Keyboard looks good. The partition scheme looks good. I'm going to click install and it's warning us that we're about to format the drive and you know write to the disk and this portion of the installer typically takes about not five to ten minutes on my hardware so I'm going to pause the video. I'll be back once the installation has completed. And that portion of the installation completed, that only took about five minutes or so. Very quick installation. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on restart now and click done. And let's go ahead and reboot our freshly installed Garuda, the Qtile edition. Let me go ahead and make this thing full screen. Yep, and it looks like the installation completed just fine. And of course it's loading the Linux Zen kernel. Really like that splash screen there. All right, and uh, our login manager, well, we had the really beautiful login manager in the uh, live environment. It looks like something was broken along the way because obviously that login manager, uh, apparently we lost the theme after installation, so it's not really themed correctly anymore. I wonder if an update would take care of that. And then welcome to Garuda. Would you like to start the setup assistance? So it looks like it's going to go ahead and run a few like automatic updates and things. I'm going to click yes here, give it my root password. Looks like we're still going to have the compositing problem here. So before I do anything else, what I want to do is go ahead and kill all PyCom one more time. Super Q to kill that. And uh, yeah, it's running an automatic update is what the... Uh, assistant is doing. It's probably going to run through a few things here. I'm going to go ahead and super enter to get a terminal and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to run the xrander command xrander s 1920 by 1080. Let's go ahead and set a proper screen resolution and then super Q to kill that window. And it's asking during the updates apparently there's been some uh, uh, programs that were installed originally when the ISO came out that are no longer available or they're being replaced with other programs. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, allow those programs to re be replaced by the replacement programs. And this update is going very quickly. You can see Pac-Man now has the concurrent downloads where it's downloading uh, like five or six programs at a time. That really speeds up uh, Pac-Man downloads installations here when you update your system. So this update of 237 packages is really going very fast. And the update completed, and we get a little message here saying system updated, and then we get the little penguin icon. It says, please enter to continue. So I'm assuming the uh, 
assistant will continue on with other things. Yeah, there's a post installation wizard it wants to run. So I'll click yes. Do I need printer, scanner, or Samba support? No, I won't be attaching a, a printer or a scanner to this VM and Samba. That's for setting up a Samba shared. So that's where you uh, basically sharing files between uh, Linux machines and Windows machines usually. Do you want to install additional Garuda wallpapers? I do love my wallpapers, so I'll click yes to that. All right, and then we get, uh, I guess, a little wizard where we can install extra packages that were not installed during the default installation, such as do I need Asian font support? So it's going to install these fonts. I'm just going to go with the defaults that it chose. Do I want some extra software centers? Now, for me, I do everything at the command line with Pac-Man. I don't need the GNOME software center, uh, app image launcher. I may do some stuff with app images in this VM. So I actually, I'll, I'll tick that on. Octopi, I don't need. Octopi is basically like a, a synaptic package manager except for Pac-Man instead of the apt package manager that Debian and Ubuntu use. Uh, Discover, of course, KDE Software Center, I don't need that. Gnome Software Center, I don't need. I'll just go with the app image launcher. Do you need another kernel? By default, we're using the, the Zen kernel. One kernel is good enough for this VM. I'm not going to install some extra kernels. What office suites do you want? If this was a real machine, typically I would go with LibreOffice, either the Steel or the Fresh. Uh, the Steel, you get less updates, more it's a long-term support kind of LibreOffice. Fresh, you'll get uh, much more frequent updates. You also have Joplin, which is nice for note-taking. Only Office, WPS Office, which is a proprietary Office suite, but a lot of people love it, uh, especially for Windows uh, compatibility as far as Microsoft Office compatibility. A lot of people claim WPS Office has has pretty good support for that kind of stuff. Free Office is actually another proprietary Office suite, even though the name is Free Office. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go with nothing here in this VM. I won't be using any Office software. Now, uh, browsers, by default, I think it's going to install Firefox, but I'm not sure because it's asking about extra browsers. Uh, I mean, I'm going to make sure that it does install Firefox. But other than that, if I was installing this for my personal equipment, you know, I typically I'd also install Brave and I probably also install Cute Browser. I also like LibreWolf. Um, we've got some proprietary browsers in here as well. Vivaldi's proprietary, Opera's proprietary. Uh, for me, though, I don't want to install a ton of software here. I'm just going to go with Firefox. And then what email clients? Uh, here lately, I've been using MailSpring a lot. Really nice email client, uh, free and open source software as well. Geary is also a really nice desktop email client. And of course, Mozilla Thunderbird, especially if you're going to install uh, Mozilla Firefox for your browser. Mozilla Thunderbird is a nice email client. Of course, it's kind of a standard. It's been around forever. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and well, I won't need an email client, so I'll tick all of that off communication software. So this is things like Telegram and Discord, uh, Element, for those of you that need a Matrix client, Zoom, Skype, Microsoft Teams, etc. What communication software do I need? I really don't need any of this. What audio software? Now, again, if this was uh, my main production machine, I would need some of this. I'd probably install Audacity and Ardour. Uh, I need an audio player as well. Audacious would work for something like that. But for this VM, I'm actually not going to install any of this extra software. What video software? Uh, I probably would just play all of my videos in MPV. I also like to install VLC because VLC has some extra functionality that MPV doesn't have. One of the things I love about VLC, especially playing audio in it, it is, has the ability to uh, play single tracks as far as multi-track audio. So VLC is kind of a nice thing to have. OBS, of course, is what I use to record all of my videos. And uh, Caden Live is what I use to edit all of my videos. So I'd probably install all of those on my main production machine. But again, I'm going to skip this. And graphics, I'd probably want something like GIMP, probably want Inkscape, uh, Darktable is nice for those of you that like to edit raw photos. I'm going to skip all of these applications as well. Got more multimedia software. We got some disk burning utilities, and I won't need any of that in the VM. And games, I'm going to skip installing any games as well. What development software do I need? Uh, I want GNU Emacs, <laughs> of course. Uh, you got other options here for IDEs. You have Visual Studio Code. You've got Atom. PyCharm is here as well. Um, other than that, Cockpit is here, and that's nice. Uh, 
I actually did a video about installing VMs using Cockpit. I did that video uh, just a few months back. A really nice program. What virtualization software do I need? So I typically use Virt Manager and VirtualBox. I like having both on my machines because sometimes when you're installing things in virtual machines, sometimes they work better in VirtualBox than Virt Manager or vice versa. So I like having both actually installed, but I won't be installing any VMs inside this VM. What other software do you want? I don't know what most of these are. Varieties of wallpaper changer. I don't really care to have my wallpapers automatically changing on me. Conky is a system monitor, but I really don't need that either. So I'm just going to skip those. And then it says a screen dispatcher, text-to-speech, which is uh, I won't need text-to-speech. Hunspell, that's a spell checker. I won't need any of that. So I will cancel all of that. And then I don't know what this is Asian language support again. I don't need any of that. Go ahead and give it a sudo password again. The few choices that we did uh, choose, it's going to go ahead and install those packages for us. So Firefox, of course, is going to install the App Image Launcher. I think I also chose uh, Garuda Wallpapers and GNU Emacs, of course, is going to install as well. And it finished installing all of our software. I'm going to click on the close button here and it says authentication is needed to run user bin bash as the super user. So it's going to try to execute another script. Do you want to remove the setup assistant? Yeah. So after you run through the assistant one time, yeah, you probably want to go ahead and remove it from your system because, I mean, you're never going to run it again. So there's no reason to keep it around. All right. And now we've got our welcome screen here where we get the Garuda Assistant, which should have been removed now. We have Garuda Settings Manager. Let's click on that. This is just your standard kind of control center where you've got hardware configuration, kernel, language packages, user accounts, time and date, keyboard settings, locale settings. I really don't need to play with any of this stuff. But if I wanted to, if I double clicked on the kernel, this would be interesting if you were uh, trying to install or remove, if you had multiple kernels. So that is really nice. It's a very easy way to, to get different kernels. For example, right now we're using the Zen kernel, but if I wanted to switch over to the Linux LTS kernel, I could go ahead and install that. And I'm assuming, does it allow me to remove kernels? Well, I don't see the Linux Zen kernel here as far as something to remove. Let's see, how do I get back to the main? Uh, I hit quit, I guess, and then I just have to click on Garuda settings again, but I don't think I really want to play around with anything in here. We also have a uh, time shift, of course, that is for our snapshots Add remove software. I'm assuming this would be our graphical package manager. Yeah. And I, I probably won't play around with this either. I'll just use the command line to install and remove my software system cleaner. Let's see what program this is. This is Stacer. Stacer, basically it will delete, uh, extra cruft that's hanging out on your system. So it will clean you know, cached files and you know, logs and things like that. It'll get rid of some unnecessary files that are just hanging out on your file system. So that is Stacer, super Q to quit. And it's asking for confirmation to quit. Now, when I resized the uh, resolution earlier, it kind of messed up our wallpaper. So let me do super shift D, as I think that would bring up D menu. No, it does not. Super D? Super D gets us, not D menu, it gets us some other application launcher. I'm really not sure what application launcher this is. Let's see, do we have uh, wallpapers, uh, maybe displays? I'm wondering what program they use to actually set wallpapers and, and things like that. If I just search for wall, yeah, desktop preferences, let's try that. Desktop manager is not active. Okay, well, let me open a terminal. And let me run HTOP. And by default, we're using about 761 megs of the six gigs of RAM that I gave this VM. That might seem like that's a little high for a, a tiling window manager, but we do have some, some applications running. We've got quite a few things actually running in the sys tray here. But really, I just wanted to see what was running on the system at the moment. Right now, we have uh, Alacrity as our terminal. Uh, we have Cocky Daemonize running. That's weird because we don't have a Cocky on the desktop. So why is Cocky... Uh, like a daemon running in the background. Let's kill all cocky because I won't need that. I was trying to see what kind of uh, pull kit uh, session manager they were using here. Uh, I'm assuming it would be, uh, I see LX pull kit, so I'm assuming LX session. Yeah, that is what is running for our session manager there. 
It looks like they're going to use a lot of the standard LXDE uh, applications. Let me open NVIM, our .config uh, slash qtile slash config.py. This is your qtile config, and I can already tell you it's not going to open. You see the word vim is red. Here in the fish shell, that means Vim is actually not installed. So that's one of the cool things about the, the fish shell is it will actually tell you when a command is a legitimate command or it's not. So when, anytime you get red instead of blue, that means, hey, the command you're currently typing is not going to work. So what I need to do is I'm going to need to do sudo pacman dash capital S Vim. Let's go ahead and install Vim for a text editor. Because I don't know if any other text editor is installed other than GNU Emacs. I, I can't really use GNU Emacs, though I, I typically use uh, Evil Mode in Emacs. Uh, I wonder if Nano was here. Nano is not here. You see, when I type it, it's red. Uh, VI. VI is also not installed. So really, for a command line text editor, nothing was installed. So I had to install Vim. Now I'm going to up arrow and Vim dot config slash qtile slash config dot pi and let's go ahead and check out some of the key bindings because I don't know too much about the key bindings here looks like super v would open pavu control I don't know why they think pavu control is an important enough program that you're going to use all the time to need a key binding uh, because I mean I, I do a lot with audio and I rarely open up you know pavu control it's not something I even open up on a, a daily basis or you know I probably open pavu control once or twice a week you know when things are not right uh, a super enter of course gets us our alacrity terminal super w changes I guess our pi wall colors so let me try that super w and nothing happened super w so I'm assuming, even though they got a key binding for it, pywall-colors.py, where is it finding that? I'm going to cd into um, dot .config slash qtile, do a ls, and there is a folder called scripts. So I'll cd into scripts and do an ls. And yeah, I, I don't know where this pywall-colors.py script is, is pywall installed. So if I did WAL, which is the command for pywall typically, you do something like pywall-i and then name a file, but you see WAL is all red, meaning that program doesn't exist. So sudo pacman dash capital S pywall. Well, let's go ahead and install pywall. And now that we have it installed, if I do super W, does that actually do anything? No, it does not. Yeah, so I'm not sure why we have this key binding here for this pywall colors uh, Python script. I, I can't, I, I don't know where this thing is supposed to exist on the system, or even if it does, I guess I could make sure with the find command. So I'm going to sudo find on root. So I'm going to search the entire file system for a case insensitive name, so dash i name space, and I'm going to do inside these quotes here, asterisk, and what was the name of the script? pywall dash colors an asterisk meaning I really don't care what comes before pywall dash colors or after it uh, yeah there's nothing we also have super shift D to launch D menu I did think that 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 key binding existed super shift D to launch D menu and actually doesn't launch D menu it launches this script D menu dot sh which is in uh, dot config slash qtile slash scripts d menu dot sh so if I tried to run this uh, yeah no such file or directory I'm assuming it's because d menu is not even now d menu is installed so why does the script not work it says no such file or directory it's complaining about dot cache wall colors dot sh so it's complaining about this file not existing well what I could do here, don't try this at home kids, but I'm just going to copy that path to that file and I'm going to touch uh, that file. What, what I'm doing is I'm going to create an empty file at this exact location, dot cache slash wall slash colors dot sh. Uh, it says no such file. <laughs> so I was going to try to make this file if it'll let me. Let's try it with Vim. Yeah. And then write and quit. Uh, it's complaining because I guess we don't have privileges for this. If I do right quit exclamation to force it, uh, I guess, yeah, it's not going to let us create that file either. 
maybe I need to run the PyWall program at least one time. Uh, so if I do wall dash I, and let's go user, share, and typically it's backgrounds. Uh, but backgrounds, it's not here. That's typically where you find your default wallpapers on a Linux system. User share wallpapers is sometimes used. Okay, that works. And if I tab complete here, uh, Garuda wallpapers exist and tab complete again. And I have, I guess, about 80 wallpapers to choose from. And obviously I can't preview them, but I'm just going to pick one. So I'll just do uh, Garuda Eagle. That sounds like a cool wallpaper. And if I hit enter, it's going to generate... Uh, uh, the pie wall color scheme, a new terminal color scheme based on the wallpaper that we set, which is this uh, just the standard default Garuda Eagle. And I'm assuming the reason that that D menu script wouldn't run before is it bases its color scheme off of what is set by PyWall. So um, now if I try to run that, now DMenu actually works and it respects the uh, new color scheme that PyWall sets. So I, that's the problem there. So anybody that installs this needs to know that they need to, before you ever try to run DMenu, you actually have to run the PyWall command. Uh, but PyWall was actually not installed by default. So actually you have to install PyWall first, then you need to set a wallpaper using PyWall and then you can use DMenu. So that's actually kind of a bug. I, I think whoever's maintaining Garuda Qtile Edition probably should correct that problem. PyWall obviously needs to be installed by default, and they probably should go ahead and install that cached file that dmenu looks for by default. Looking at the key bindings in our config.py, it looks like nitrogen is here for setting a wallpaper, alt Control i So let me try that, alt Control i uh, doesn't launch nitrogen. If I do a nitrogen at the command line, nitrogen, you can see the name is red, meaning nitrogen is actually not installed. So we do have several key bindings here that uh, the programs are not actually installed. So I don't know why the default config has key bindings for programs that are not here. We also have another key binding, uh, alt control U for Pavu control. That's the second Pavu control key binding. I don't know. Uh, again, I don't know why you need even one key binding for Pavu control, much less two. Uh, Alt E for Emacs. And since I did install Emacs, let me do super two to go to the second workspace. And now I'm going to do super E or actually Alt E because it was not using the standard mod key. It was actually using mod one, which is the Alt key. And that launches GNU Emacs. If I do uh, control X, control C to close, that will kill GNU Emacs. I don't know a ton of the standard GNU Emacs key bindings, but I do at least know how to exit. Going through the uh, rest of the config here, uh, most of this looks like just a standard kind of config. Uh, we've got several different layouts available here. Uh, you got your group names here, and these are the workspace names here, which by default is just one through zero. So you've got 10 workspaces, just do super and then the uh, number on the keyboard, Super 2, goes to the second workspace. Super 3 would go to the third workspace. Super 1 goes back to the first workspace. Super Shift 2 sends the window with focus to the second workspace. So now I just sent that terminal window to the second workspace. If I go to the second workspace with Super 2, you can see that window is there. If I do Super Shift 1, I'll send it back to the first workspace and then Super 1 to move me back to the first workspace. And there is that window. And let me get back to this. Let me do Super Shift 1 to send all of that back to the first workspace. And it actually takes me to the workspace along with it. So they're, they're doing some interesting things here in their Qtile config. Uh, I would probably modify some of that to my liking, but this is a good start. You know, certainly this is a, a easier start than starting with the default Qtile config, which honestly, uh, Qtile is one of the easier tiling window managers to get into, but still it's nice that somebody that knows a little something about Qtile has taken the time to theme it a little for you. For you up front. You've got some nice widgets going on here in the panel. You've got your layout widget, you got a CPU widget, this looks like your disk uh, space widget, time and date, and then of course here at the end you have a sys tray. In the sys tray you've got what widgets do we have? We have our uh, network manager widget, the volume icon widget, and this is a screenshot utility, and then the Garuda logo here is, what is this? Update keyring, force hotfix update, quit. I'm not sure what 
program that is. I'm sure it's one of the custom Garuda programs, but I'm not exactly sure what that does. And then this here does nothing either on a left click or a right click. Oh, that's a battery icon. Of course, I'm not on a laptop. And then finally, the keyboard, I'm assuming, is our keyboard layout. Uh, obviously, I don't want to play around with that, but it actually doesn't do anything when I click on it anyway. I wonder if we have any clickable events that happen when I click the widgets. So if I click on the date, yeah, nothing happens. Uh, if I click on the disk space, HTOP launches. So that's cool. Super cute to kill that window. Uh, HTOP also launches when I click on the CPU here. And the layouts, of course, when you click the layouts, it actually changes the layout. If, let me open a third window so you can see we're in a floating layout. That's ratio tile. That is the max layout. So all the windows are full screen stacked on top of each other. Columns, stack, tile, and tree tab. And tree tab is interesting here. It's one of the ones I sometimes play around with in my config. Vertical tile, zoomy. Zoomy is another interesting one because uh, when you highlight over here, it actually brings that window to the big zoomed in window where everything else is forced into the small little column. So that's a, a really cool kind of layout. And of course, Monad Tall is your default master stack layout. Now, because I did want to see some of the Garuda wallpapers and I, I don't have a proper wallpaper browser, we know that the, uh, the config did kind of expect nitrogen to be on the system. So let's go ahead and install it. So I'm going to do sudo pacman dash capital S nitrogen. Give it the root password. All right, now that we have that installed, I'm going to switch to Workspace 2. And what was it? Alt Control I to launch nitrogen? Yes. Then I'm going to go to Preferences because by default, it doesn't know what directory to search for wallpapers. I'm going to add a directory and I'm going to go into the file system, the root file system at user, share, and wallpapers in Garuda's case. So where is the wallpapers directory? There it is. Garuda dash wallpapers and I'm going to hit apply and then I'm going to go ahead and click OK here and now it should populate nitrogen with a preview of all the wallpapers. All right and let's go ahead and take a look at some of these. So let me go ahead and hit apply on that. I'll switch to the third workspace. All right it did not resize that correctly. Right now it's set to automatic. What I probably want to do is I want to do scaled and hit apply again and now it actually resizes that to the proper resolution. Uh, this one here is black and white. And oh, I like the, the Garuda Eagle and the branding there. That's not bad. Uh, actually, almost all of these are Garuda branded wallpapers. Lots of abstract art eagles and things like that. I, I like this one here. It's got these colorful tiles here. Get the Garuda logo in one of the tiles. Yeah, that's not bad. That actually fits the kind of the really garish color scheme that's going on in the Qtile panel as well. That's not too bad. For me, I think I want something a little bit more minimal, maybe uh, some nice nature photo or something. Uh, how about this one here? And I'm going to go ahead and kill nitrogen. Yeah, that's not too bad either. That's actually not a nature photograph. That's some more abstract art. It's got an eagle flying through a canyon. Of course, you got the eagle head over here as well. I wonder how many programs are installed by default on the system. Does NeoFetch give us that information? It does. Packages installed through Pac-Man. 1,126 packages. If I did a uh, Pac-Man-QQ and pipe that through lists, uh, I could get a list of everything that is installed. I just want to run through this uh, just very quickly. And anything that stands out as, well, I didn't know that was installed. I'll, I'll let you guys know. Uh, EXA. That is an alternative to the ls command. So you guys know that in my configs, I always use exa, you know, to display this colorful ls information that's as standard in all of my configs. It looks like whoever designed um, Garuda Qtile is also using exa rather than just the standard ls command. It looks like we also have the Starship prompt. So that is the prompt they're using here in the fish shell. If I switch over to bash, uh, does that using Starship? No, that's using a much more standard kind of prompt. Uh, let's see. So uh, fish, EXA, <laughs> Qtile, uh, Starship prompt. Uh, it, it's like, it's almost like I designed this distribution, right? So I'm going to go ahead and, and close out all of these windows. So that's just a quick look at the Qtile edition for Garuda Linux. Garuda, again, is exploding in popularity. It's like number two or number three on the DistroWatch page hit rankings, which are, are practically meaningless. The DistroWatch rankings don't mean anything. It's not an accurate representation of anything, but I know 
that Garuda is actually gaining a lot of popularity because so many of you guys have messaged me. Ever since I made my initial video about Garuda, I've gotten tons of messages from you guys that have installed it. Many of you guys have been living in it ever since I made my initial video about Garuda and are happy with it. I do like the fact that Garuda does some interesting things. I like you know the ButterFS default file system, the fish shell being the default user shell. That's nice. And you guys know I really love Qtile as a window manager. I promote Qtile heavily on this channel. When I started making videos about Qtile about four years ago, nobody had ever heard about this tiling window manager. And I'd been using it for like seven or eight years. And it, it, it kind of bugged me that nobody knows about this fantastic window manager that's got all these cool widgets. It's very extensible. It's written in Python. It's kind of easy to use. And nobody really talked about it until this guy right here started talking about it. And now we've got Linux distributions actually making Qtile additions. And I, I'm really proud about that because I hope that I had some small part to do in that because I think Qtile as a project project deserves more attention. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. I'm talking about Epsy Gabe, James Mitchell, Paul Scott West, Akami Allen, Chuck, Commander Angry, Kurt, David, Dylan, Gregory, Heiko, Mike, Erjan, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Fedor, Polytech, Raver, Rip, Private, Steven, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at the Qtile edition of Garuda Linux would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. Because I don't have any corporate sponsors, it's just me and you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to support me, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys, peace. Now they just need to make an Xmonad edition.